grid 11, as you can see, as we get ready for this first race. There is a compulsory pit stop. We're off and running the turn one. Ash Sutton is the pole man in the Panzer Fuels 116 as they fan out four, five, six wide on the run down to turn one. First of two races tonight in car sales, ARG Esport Cup. And I reckon that was Stephen Johnson in car 17 tasting a bit of the Armco. I think it was, and Ben McMillan, I think, was involved as well. Ash Sutton out in the lead, and we can already see that two, three, four are wide there. And now the slip stream is going to take uh, take place going up into turn four. Actually, spent a little bit of time this week trying to learn the circuit myself, so I got a bit of an idea of what the circuit's like for these guys. And we can already see how close everybody is. There's not so many turns. We've got a challenge for the lead there with Haber trying to get up the inside of Sutton. They're going to go side by side through these next series of corners. This is where the slip train is going to come into account. Maybe even some bump drafting by the cars behind there. No one's blinking here. And who blinks first for their pit stop? Because the reality is that they're going to all have to make it. The one to worry here is the pit entry. If you're right yeah. up behind another car, it's a bit like Barbagallo in WA, yeah. where it's very easy to get tagged from behind. We actually saw in practice there was quite a few shunts, people trying to get into the pit lane, and it's really quite tight. So you have to, uh, you know, slow it up a little bit more to try and get the car uh, actually into pit lane. And if the car behind you isn't expecting you to make that pit stop, um, they're probably going to come in contact, and we're going to probably see a few of those shunts happen. Um, you don't really generally put the indicator on and let the car behind know that uh, you're coming in for a pit stop. So that could uh, play a part tonight, Noons. These guys are uh, just jostling for position, though. Great racing. A bit of a contact there. Cox, though, he's come into contention. He's uh, he's actually taken the lead now, which uh, is the first time that we've seen Jordan Cox into the lead. Beautiful move there. And... Uh, We've got Harley Haber there in P2 as well, putting quite a lot of pressure on Cox. He's going to bump drive, and we've got a car in the fence in the background there. Is that Brett Holdsworth? Yeah, yeah Brett Holdsworth has gone to the fence, unfortunately. We're on board now with Matt Simmons. Let's go on board a little bit here. This is a fourth gear corner. Oh, and he was in contact with Brett Holdsworth. Generally, here we go. Here's a pit stop now. So we see how tight it is trying to get into that uh, pit lane entry there. And as I mentioned before, it's probably 22 to 25 seconds per pit stop. Giacomo leads. Jordan Cox is next from Ben Barguana, Garth Tanza, Michael Clemente, Reese Gould and Barton Moore. Those top seven have not made a compulsory pit stop at the moment. They still have to serve a stop. Interesting to see what the lap times are, are like though, whether it's actually affecting them. You've got to remember we've got fuel load coming off uh, and whether or not the tyre degradation versus the fuel load coming off is, is enough to uh, sort of, you know, be a deficit in lap time. We've got a Ooh, big drama. shot here. John Martin's involved, which is a replay. That's the track tech number 10 car of Niels Langeveld, who moves across, moves across, blocks the line, says go the long way. So. Martin has to go the long way, and there's contact, and they're both in drama. So much jostling going on. Look at this. That's Randall down the inside, into the back straight. TD, he's got the move on Harley Haver, and look for Nathan Hearn. He's going to fill the gap there on the way through as they exit turn five at the loop, the long oh. out wide. That'll hurt Haver for exit speed. That'll drop into third in this queue of cars. Three cars yet to make their stop. Jackman and Jordan Cox running long let's see how that strategy works out there's just under 12 minutes to go in this one and don't forget it's a reverse top 20 20th goes to pole pole goes to 20th for the second race tonight let's dial in and have a chat to tom randall he's our effective race leader and he is effectively covering the inside line tom this is getting willing yeah hang on i'm just about to get overtaken here that's why we let's see if i can hold it that's why we thought just, we tune in just and just yeah, I was going to say, you just love to pick the right time. All right, <laughs> I actually didn't know yeah, I was an effective draft, leader. Yeah. Nah, well, we're going to see what we're going to do here. Uh, this is, I'm in a bit of a tricky spot here. But just look, we'll just... Him. Make it oh. simple. Uh, I feel like I had your uh, your tips there, Noonzy. <laughs> <laughs> well, the uh, two hey, guys um, in front of the queue are look, yet to make their stops. Jack and Jordan Fox are yet to pit. They've run really, really okay. well. You are in the fight for the effective race lead. Gartana making a move there on Dylan O'Keefe. And he's got a rubber advantage. Remember that he stopped a bit later in this race than many of the others. So he's starting to sneak his way forward. Won a race last week in the Zolderan. We're on board with Dylan O'Keefe. 
importantly, points leader coming into tonight. Nine points in front of Ash Sutton. Problem is, at the moment, Sutton is sixth in the race. O'Keefe is 14th in the race. And now he's got a question mark here. Does he follow Garth Tander or does he jump on board Rick. into the rear oh! of Rick Capo? And he has unloaded car 92. Tander's off as well. And that is a move. Oh, no. Oh. Carried on at the next corner. Wilmington's gone as well. Huge carnage. Huge drama. Our series leader has been involved in something that he didn't need to get involved in. Let's have a look on the total replay. They climb turn four out of the S's over the overpass. Tanda right up the back wing of Capo. And look for O'Keefe here. He gets a run off Garth. Goes to the inside. Gets a run off Capo. Contact. Yeah. Then O'Keefe and Tanda come together. And then it goes on down into the next corner as Tanda comes back onto the road and collects Braden Wilmington on the way through. Pit stop o'clock and Jordan Cox is in the lane as the fight continues here. Haver, Randall, Hearn. They're going to come around onto the pit straight. Let's see where they come around in relation to the number six GRM car. We ride on board with Harley Haver in the Kumo number 21. Just over six minutes left to go and they have come out comfortably in front of the GRM combination. There is Jackman on his way out, so they'll fan out in the tail end of the top 10. Haber's got away though, look at that margin. It's a couple of car lengths, he's broken the toe, and now Randall is being chased across the road by Nathan Hearn, who, you want to be careful being hung one out, one wide, because Ash Sutton's about to drill that 116 car down the inside, and that's exactly what he does. The former British touring car champ who smoked them last week, and now Hearn's in the grass. This will mean he loses that contact with the front view. Yeah, Sutton there just gave him a little bit of a hip and shoulder on the exit as well, made sure he finished the job off nicely there. The number 21 is the number to have in the uh, Car Sales AIG Esport Cup because that is the car that leads the way, the Kumo Tire 21 of Harley Haber, but Ash Sutton, the Englishman, is in the draft, looking, 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 He's so going fast. the long way. Maybe it's a Panther Fuels. Uh, no, I want to be Tom. the Panther Fuels. I, I want to be Tom Randall here in third spot. These two are going to compromise one another on the run to turn three because it's going to be a, a fight for who's deeper and who's braver. Oh. Randall will try to fill the inside. This is good stuff. 45 seconds on the clock to go in this first race. Yeah, one more lap to go. And he's in, he's, I don't know whether he's got a tyre advantage or what he's got, but he's certainly got speed on these guys in front of him. To come from P12, we haven't seen that happen very regular in a race like this. So he's obviously got heaps of speed. Here we go. The guy who's zeroing in on the lead pack is Jackman, who pitted later in the Valvoline car, Nathan Hearn. We're on board with, he is in position to take advantage should something happen with the top three. Here Look, we go. They're all chasing across the road. And Sutton's, we you can't weave like this. Haber was doing the, the full-on go-kart trick. It, this will be a shunt for sure, the way they're going at the moment. Randall's out wide. You don't want to be there. Ah. Sutton trying to get down the inside. Haber will get away from them on the exit. A little bit of a rub between Randall and Sutton. Now we go down to turn six and seven. Two corners to go. Yeah, the slipstream is taking effect now. And Randall is going oh. for it. Down the inside. Oh. No, Won't get it done. Against it. And there's a bump with Sutton, and I reckon that Haber is off the hook if he just doesn't oh. overcook this oh. one. Oh. Randall's off the road at the very last opportunity down at turn seven, and that will mean Harley Haber gets home by, well, it was a massive margin, 0.65 there in the end. All righty, here we go. Come on. See who we can uh, dominate this one. Last week, as we said, we got uh, Garth Tander got in, out in the lead. I think a lot of the drivers are finding once I don't get any damage. Here we go, we're away. Down to turn one, big field, 43 cars tonight. Three wildcard entrants, 40 ARG affiliated competitors from a bunch of different categories, from TCR Australia, TCR NZS, ah. 5,000. We didn't get the whole field through towards turn two. There was one off in the background there as they climbed their way through the S's onto the back straight to only have one out of 43 in the fence in a couple of corners, that's actually a good result. But it's Tom Alexander, the young Kiwi, the Super Utes champ, leading the way on the run down the back straight for the end of this opening lap. Shorter race, as TD mentioned uh, earlier on. This is just oh. 15 minutes and in the fence hard. Ben McMallon, the Michelin car, from 20th on the grid, Harley yeah. Haber, our race one winner, is already up to fifth. That's amazing. 
he must have got an amazing run through some of that traffic there. Tom Alexander's been pushed wide there and Gas got that lead now. Ricky Capo slots into P2. So again, we're seeing Gas take, uh, take advantage of race two and uh, that reverse top 20. These guys, oh, Ricky Capo now aiming to slot him down the inside. He's gone super deep. Garth back up the inside and he's gonna get a much better run. That's the thing here, you sort of lose a little bit of ex exit speed on uh, exit of turn one and you pay for it all the way up to turn five. Down the inside, the long back straight, picking up a toe from Harley Haver, our uh, race one winner. And Harley was sixth in the points coming into tonight. So he's having a ripping run so oh. far. And just as I say that, that's Tander and Capo getting in together on the exit of turn five at the loop. And that is a pretty serious sort of an accident. They are in big, big dramas and going to drop a whole pile of time. And who was it? Was it Capo, was it? Yeah, Ricky Capo. Uh, yeah, well, he's just come um, barreling up the inside. He was going to claim the world championship at the uh, third lap, third corner, and uh, got me. And uh, and then, yeah, put me in the wall. So, car's remarkably straight for such a big accident. But, um, yeah, we're down. I don't know where we are outside the 10. Uh, P13 to give you the update there. Next to the queue, just in front of you. Uh, who are you chasing? Oh, there's a, there's a big okay. one happening right in front of me now. Oh, boy, there sure is. Tim Brooks in it, Nick Carroll. Ben Bargwana, they're all involved. So that's one way to get yourself into the top 10. Yeah, that's it. That's half the battle in this thing. It's just staying out of everyone's dramas. So, uh, yeah, that would have helped. We've would have passed a few there. Uh, you passed four of them. You're up to P9. That was it. It was that easy. Let's have a look at the replay. Tony, it was that re easy in real life. I know, I know. If do it, we would assist you and help you out. We're looking at the replay of what happened in that accident. James Golding was right at the front of the queue. There was plenty going on, and he got a touch from Barguana, who had had a touch from behind from Nick Carroll. So it was three and a one didn't go, and uh, there's plenty of pieces of Audi left on the road. If that was a real-life race, Melbourne Performance Centre would be sending some very They'd big They'd be loving it. For sure. They'd be absolutely loving it. Three and a half minutes on the clock. Of course, this is round three of ten in car sales ARG Esport Cup. Can we reveal, and I'm looking at our producers very closely, where we go next week and what we are racing next week? TD, you love your open wheelers? Formula 3 cars yes. at the home of the Italian Grand Prix, Monza. That's next week. Right now, though, it's all about the Audi touring car on the run down the back straight with Ash Sutton giving Harley Haver a little bit of assistance. And you'll notice here, he's got the drafting thing right. Bumping the car doesn't with help the speed and... It's really fine line between causing a shunt and not. Yeah, we've seen that quite a few times tonight, but he's really shown his experience there. He's putting quite a bit of pressure on, but he's putting himself in a good position to try and make a passing maneuver in this back end of the race. Huge amount of pressure on Ali's shoulders there, and it's so easy to make a mistake in these, uh, these sims. That's probably the trickiest bit to actually be consistent. So the guys that can uh, churn out lap after lap, they're doing a really nice job. But Sutton is right in the toe, down the back straight at the Watkins Glen circuit. This is the track that 40 years ago this year, Alan Jones won the race ah. in his World Championship winning year. And Sutton is making his claim for this second race down the inside at turn five at the loop and a lapped car to come into play here. This could make it really interesting. Yeah, this could play a bit of a part in it if that car, who have we got there? Can't quite make it out, haven't seen enough, but he does get jump out of the way there, so not really going to be a factor in the result. Ash Sutton has got himself into the lead there, but Harley Haber is still putting the pressure on, and we've got a minute left in this race. Tom Alexander just in the back of shot there. He's still in third. Dylan O'Keefe, then Jordan Cox, Jaden Ransley, Michael Clemente. Whoa, it's willing here. Sutton carts him to the grass on the run to turn five. Oh. There's a reason why, because it's the last lap, and it's on like Donkey Kong. A bit of biffo there, mid-corner. Harley trying to unsettle Ash uh, to try and get a nice run. This is the last opportunity now. Whoever leads into the last section here will win the race. Look at this. Haber's going to go long way and try to stuff it up the inside at the last turn. He needs a dive bomb to be able to do it, but he needs the points in the series because he stands to extend his way up through into the points. He had a win earlier on. He's not going to quite get there. Sutton will win the race, but Haber has scored the top points for the night and put himself right into play in the car sales ARG Esport Cup, a win for the Brit.
Haber is second. Alexander held on all the way through there to finish in third.